watching the mind helps to transcend. Mind is finite. It gives the glimpse of infinite. It is the door. It is the door through which you can transcend. Time is an aspect of mind. And through that mind learns to divide. But the journey of the beyond begins through the mind and its aspects. When you begin the meditation, you enter the mind and when you start watching the mind and the functions of the mind and the very fact of watching the mind makes you aware of the limitations of the mind and then you realize that it is a state in transit and you do not belong to the mind. Instead you belong, you are a far away entity, quantitatively different, qualitatively different, just a pure watching. In other words, just a pure mirror which only reflects the reality but is not imprinted by any reality. Aurobindo has explained various aspects of the mind, physical mind, mental mind, super mind. Physical mind, a little difference is necessary to understand how does the physical mind works. It is automatic. You are driving the car. You are you are not even aware and all of a sudden your steering turns towards the home. You may be thinking something else. This is an aspect of the physical mind. That is one way to understand the various aspects of the mind. But transcending beyond the mind is the way, the ultimate. And when you are journeying through the various aspects of the mind, it is like you are walking through the deserts. But if you add the dimension of love to it, then the journey becomes totally different. But these two have developed as a separate paths out of heart, the path developed as Sufi path and out of the mind a path developed Zen, Zen Buddhism. But if you really understand they are not separate, when you are traveling, you are traveling as well as there is transit time. So both are necessary. A certain part of the journey is transit and a certain part of journey is traveling. So along the inward path, a certain part of the journey is through love. And then you reach the dimension beyond the mind, the journey of mind, journey through the mind, through the caves of the mind. And when mind becomes a mirror, if an ugly face comes in front of it, without any judgment it shows the ugly face in its full details, without any condemnation. And when beautiful face appears, there is no appreciation and no evaluation either. It shows the ugly face and the beautiful face with the same detached, far away, reflecting, witnessing. And that is important. But as long as you are part of the mind, you are finite, 
the division comes in. The moment you become a witness, there will be no need to leave anything. Your ego becomes the outside gate. In fact, you do not have to leave it, instead it will leave you. Even if you run after it, you cannot catch hold of it. So the right process has to be understood. Ego is not something like your umbrella or your shoes or your raincoat that you leave outside the gate. It is hidden inside the mind. It is an aspect of the mind. It is an aspect of finiteness. You cannot leave your head outside. Ego comes along wherever you go. It has to be understood. In that understanding it disappears. It is the false identity. Only a witness knows that ego is a false entity and you need not fight with it in any way. All that is false. Do you ever fight with darkness? The, mo the moment you start fighting with darkness, you will not be able to win it. When you find darkness in the room, do you struggle or pull the hand and bring it outside? Do you wrestle with it? Do you start taking out your sword to cut off the head of the darkness? If you do any such thing, that will simply show an intelligence. You will not be able to touch it even, the darkness that is in the room. You cannot throw the darkness into a neighbor's yard because it is not tangible. With the negative, nothing can be done directly. Darkness is the negative aspect. If you want to do anything with negative, then there is something to be done to bring the positive, the element that is missing. When you do not want darkness in the room, you bring the antidote of it, you bring the light in the room. You do not bother about darkness, your whole approach is totally different. You bring the light in and the moment light comes in, you cannot find darkness anywhere. The same is true about your ego. It has no existence of its own. It is a false substitute that has given to you so that you can go on playing with it and completely forget the search for the real self. And the demands of this false ego are immense and are never fulfilled. It will demand money, it will demand respect, it will demand power, it will go on demanding things one after the other and you go on fulfilling it, but it is never fulfilled, always remains empty. It's like that it has a bottomless base, the more you put into it, it just slips out of it. You cannot make an egoist contented. Ego is always requiring something more and more, growing bigger and bigger and remains oozing always. The more you try to fill it, the more you are you will find that it is empty. The more demanding it becomes, you become almost a slave to a false entity and life is wasted in ambitions that ego creates. It is one of the most dangerous inventions that society has managed to create. So when you want to drop, never think in terms of dropping it because even the word drop gives you an idea that it is something. It is nothing in reality.
It is not tangible. You cannot drop it. You cannot put it out of the door. You have to look into the reality of it. In deep meditation, you become a witness of all the functioning of the mind. Because the ego is the complicated byproduct of your mind's functioning, its thoughts, its desires, ideologies, prejudices, its politics, philosophy, its religion, everything contributes in some way or the other to create a certain dimension of ego in you. It is important to understand this. Adi Shankar, when he met while wandering in Himalayas, he met his master and he asked, Who are you? And in response to that, he explained, composed a composition which says that I am neither the mind and neither the storehouse of the memory nor the ego sense. I am the eternal bliss. I am the light. And by watching, that is the only way you can transcend beyond the mind. And when you transcend beyond the mind, you reach to a dimensionless dimension, open space. That open space is your reality. If you have never thought of meditation, you cannot meditate. Philosophers cannot meditate. Their whole approach to life is intellectual. They think about and about things. So you do not have to think about ego or mind or anything. You have to become a witness. A philosopher cannot become a witness of any experience, particularly the experience of their own thought process. The moment you start watching the thoughts floating on the inner sky, a, diff a journey of meditation begins. If you really want to get rid of ego and the mind, you will have to go so deep into your meditation that you can create a distance between you and your mind. Immediately you will realize that your ego is the false and the moment you have seen it, it is dropped. Not that you have to drop instead in your very watching, understanding, witnessing, it begins. With ego comes a desire to exhibit and show. It is an aspect of ignorant mind. Why do you want to exhibit? Why do you want people to know? What is the cause of it? And why do you make it so significant in your life <coughs> that people should think that you are somebody very significant, important or extraordinary? Why? It is so because you have not yet discovered the self and you are living in considering the false entity as the real. You have the ego, the substitute for the false, substitute for the self. It is not substantial, it is false. It gives you the impression that something is existing. Self is substantial, but that is not known to you as yet. Indeed, a man cannot live without the feeling of I. It is difficult to live without it. Then, from what center will you function? You need an I, even if it is false, but it is helpful to understand. Without an I, you simply disintegrate. Who will be the dis... Who will be 
the integrator, the agent within you, who will integrate you and from what center will you function? Unless you know this self, you have to live with this false and and ego means you have a substitute self, a false, you do not know the self. So you create a self of your own. It is a mental creation and for anything that is false, you have to make supports. Exhibition gives you support. The journey begins in a totally different way. Witnessing is the way to begin that journey, witnessing the mind, witnessing all that is happening, the thoughts that is arising, whatsoever comes in front of it, in front of the mirror, it reflects, is there judgment or there is no. Then witnessing begins to work. You have to start with it in small doses. And then its process deepens and when it attains fruition, you know that you are not the mind, you are beyond that, you use the mind, you are not time, time has its limitation because time is an offshoot of the mind. It lives through the two dimensions, the past and the future. And the moment witnessing begins, these two aspects of the time begin to disintegrate and you come into the state, come into the space which is space and time together, spatio-time. Time does not exist, space does not exist. You are simply in this very moment. Observe what happens. You meet someone. Oh, you remember that we met last time? No, I never met you before. And ego feels hurt. And I talked to you last time and you say you never met me? So certainly I never met you. Because I do not carry my camera with me or video. I record in this very moment what is very important that we have met again and what had happened when you met last time you were in the moment dimension of now it has created a groove in you it has created insatiable quest in you to meet again so you are again meeting in a dimension of nowness, but it is difficult for people to understand. The moment you say that I never met you before, or oh, how the food tasted, I do not know that. Because it is a totally different thing, it's a like you have tasted something and then you are trying to narrate it what it is like. No, food is to be, to bring the energy into you and the moment you have eaten, its function, its role is finished. But it is difficult to go beyond or live in a state of dimensionless dimension. You cannot live in an open space. But although you may be living in a closed space, you can go from time to time in the open space, open air, feel the breeze, feel the openness, feel the open music and come back in that refreshed. We go for walks. Meditation is like going for a stroll away from your closed circles. You are living in a closed room a certain conditioned air you are breathing, conditioned environment that has been created. You go out, you freshly 
feel the freshness of the breeze so meditation is coming out of the bondage of the mind limitations of the mind going in the infinite horizon the openness feel the freshness of the breeze and when you come back you are refreshed so when you go out for a walk and you come back you are ref let meditation be a walk a walk in the open space the infinite space where there is everything natural the music the chirping of the birds the beauty of the flowers and when it becomes your permanent abode you may be within the four walls of narrowness but you are in a different kind of a space you have brought the outside inside sometimes when you go in a state of music and a musician takes you beyond the mind it is said that maharaja kashmir was sitting there was a musical conference bade gulam ali khan he was playing the music a master musician he chanted the raag pahadi the concert was in delhi when he finished maharaja kashmir said master addressing him it appeared you have brought the valleys the gardens the beauty of kashmir in the desert of delhi in the heat of delhi the cool breeze the lush gardens the greenery the nascent snow capped mountains you brought all that beauty into so this is here first you are going leaving your limitations and going for a stroll but this stroll is a totally different it is a stroll through the meditation and when you start liking this you bring that freshness you bring that breeze into the narrowness every moment is a moment of rejoice then you do not have to go to retreat or anything because you have created your innerness mind which was a storehouse full of all kind of junks you have emptied it prepared it for a different kind of environment you have replanted put different kind of furniture different kind of decoration in the mind in that space and you will find that has become very important from time to time we go on changing the ambience of the house living room change the furniture all that gives us the past remembrance memories we try to discard it redecorate it repaint it this is an aspect of the mind the meditation the moment you bring that dimension into it because you were so much attracted to that freshness that you have felt when you went out you create that within you and then you are entering into a dimensionless dimension where time where mind where the stored memories where ego nothing hurts ego has disintegrated because witnessing has come into it the you have changed the inner furniture you have changed the inner deco the old memories are replaced with the new the walls are painted differently everything has become and then through everything the reality that you are will begin to reflect in multiple faces you will see oneness it happened a king wanted to know how one reality manifests in a myriad ways how can i experience that 
by seeing the plants, the birds, the many colors, we cannot see the oneness. How can we see that? He said, oh, he will create a situation where he can see the one reflecting through the millions, in millions of the ways, myriad ways. He went in the room. He created the room with glass. All around glass mirrors he fixed in different shapes, different dimensions, a small, big, small mirrors and then whole wall, whole roof, ceiling, floor, everything was of mirror. And when you imagine if you are in a room which has mirror all around, small mirrors and small mirrors put together to make the wall, to make the ceiling, to make the doors, to make windows, everything. And when you enter into it, you are reflecting, you are one, you alone are there. But you are reflecting through every single mirror that is there in the room. The oneness is manifesting. So you create your inner space, that of mirror and witnessing is the mirror. So when whatsoever comes, the moment you come in that inner space, you will realize that there is only oneness, the real self that you are starts manifesting through every single piece of mirror that is there planted into, pasted, fixed into that room. And you, as long as you remain ego, it depends on what others say about you. It feels good if people feel good about you and it feels bad. The ego feels bad. If others do not give you the attention, the supports are withdrawn. If many people give you attention, ego feels good. But now you are creating a different kind of inner space where ego has no place. And the moment this begins to happen, you are moving towards dimensionless dimension beyond the time. You have discovered your inner space. Then whatsoever you do, it gives you freshness, breeze, wherever you turn, you see only oneness. Let your mind, innerness become a complete a mirror a structure. So when that is there, you are going to work, you are meeting this one or that one, all you are seeing the reflection of that oneness, nothing else. And imagine what will be the light. It's simply when the king entered in that room, he was stuck with wonder. Oh, wow. No words. Everywhere he is seeing his reflection. He said, this is how the reality. Meditation gives you that space. And witnessing is the way to attain to that space, to reach to that state.